Hey everybody. So I was asked if you can create an organizational chart outside of Visio. Now there's a huge misconception that you can't and that's not accurate. You absolutely can. You can create it in Excel, which is not my favorite way, or you can create it in PowerPoint. But personally, I prefer creating it in Word using SmartArt. Now the beauty of that is nobody will be able to tell the difference. You can save it as a picture, you can save it as a PDF, and you can insert it straight into your PowerPoint, or you can send it in an email. And nobody will ever know that you didn't create it within Visio. Hmm, how cool is that? <laughs> I can't wait to show you how this works, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to do is change our page orientation from portrait to landscape. To do that, we're going to go up to layout, orientation, and landscape. And the reason we want to do that is chances are when we are creating an organizational chart, we're going to have more going across than we are coming down. The next thing we want to do is insert our smart art. So if we go to insert, smart art, this box will pop up that gives us a bunch of different SmartArt graphic templates. Now you can see we have lists, processes, cycles, pyramids, and so on, but we want to choose a hierarchy. Now we have several to choose from in here. We have an organizational chart that is just the title. We have one where you can put the picture and a title. Then we have one that has the title and the name. And then we have some circular ones and different types. But I'm going to choose just one that has the title. And we're going to tell it OK. Now if you notice, it's given us a five box default hierarchy. Now we can go about changing this one of two ways. We can click in here and do the title, but there's an easier way. If you notice over here, there is an arrow. If we click on it, it brings this box up here for us to type our text in. So let's determine if we're going to have an organization that is driven by VPs or if it's driven by a C-suite. Now what I need, mean by that is, is it going to be a CEO, then a COO, and a CIO? Or is it going to be a CEO and then VPs of each department? But let's base this off of a C-suite. So we want to type in here CEO. And then if we go to the next one, it selects this box here. Now generally a CEO has an executive assistant that does all of their planning and scheduling and things like that. So we're going to add an executive assistant. And if you notice as I type more words, the boxes get a little bit smaller. We can adjust those here a little bit later. Now if we click on the next one, let's just say we have a CFO or a chief financial officer. Let's do CFO. Now let's go to the next one and let's say that we need to add a position under the CFO like an, a controller. So let's type in controller. Now if you notice it put it here but if we hit tab if you notice it drops it under the CFO. If we hit enter then it puts another box under the controller but reporting to the CFO. So let's just say we have an accounts payable person. We do accounts payable and we hit tab. Now it's got the CFO, the controller, and accounts payable. So let's go to another department and let's put in the CIO or the chief information officer. If we hit tab, it puts it under the CFO, which is not what we want. So we can control Z to undo that. If we hit enter, it's going to add another box over here. That's OK. Hit tab and it drops it under the CIO. So they're generally going to have a director of IT. If I could type. <laughs> now if we hit enter, it's going to put another one under there. And let's just say that we have a software developer. Let's hit tab. Now, as you can see, you've got your CIO, your director of IT, and your software developer. Let's hit enter. 
and let's just say that we have a chief human resources officer. Now, this is under here, and if you notice, it is indented. Now, if we hit Shift and Tab, it'll take it back a level, Shift and Tab, and it'll put it on the same level as our other C-suite positions. So let's hit Enter, Tab, and let's say we have a Talent Acquisition Manager. And now you can see how we are forming our organizational chart based on a C-suite. So let's go ahead and close out of here and look at some of the changes we can make to the chart itself. So we can make this organizational chart bigger by pulling on this corner or pulling in the middle, but be careful. Watch what happens if you pull it off the page. And let's just say you're like, oh no, I need to pull that back a little bit. It's not going to move. So let's control Z. Just make sure that you keep it on the page. Now, let's look at our different smart art designs. If we go up to smart art design, if you look in this area here, you'll see your styles. And as you click on them, this is where we started. It gives them a little bit of a different look. We have some that have glows on them, like this has a little outside bevel. This one has an inside bevel. This one's just beveled all over the place. <laughs> That's lighter. And then we have some that can turn sideways and lay face up, but I'm not 100% sure that that will work for an organizational chart. It's kind of confusing. So let's go back to our original. Now we can also adjust our colors multiple ways. We can click on color change, and let's just say we want it to be colorful. If we click on it, it'll change all of the colors. Let's go ahead and put it back. Now, we can change each individual box. Let's just say that your organization's color is a purple. If we go to Format, Shape Fill, then we can pick a purple. If you don't like that purple, go to Shape Fill, More Colors, and pick a different purple. You can also change the color of the font. If you go over to Text Fill, you pick black, it's going to change it to black. Change it to red, don't know why you would, but you can. Let's put it back to white. <laughs> and then you can go down and change each color. So what I would recommend is before you even get started, when you've created your smart art, decide what color you want it. That way when you start adding them and hitting your tabs and your enters to add new positions, it will automatically copy that color for you. Now, if you notice when you're on format, you have a height and a width, and that is the size of your box. So let's just say you wanna make it bigger. If you notice, as we change the top, the height, the width is also changing. Let's go to executive assistant, and let's just say we wanna make it a little bit bigger. Let's go to Talent Acquisition Manager and say we want to make it wider so that whole thing fits. It's going to be one long box, but we can do it. Take that back down. So we can change our font size if we click on it and we go home. We're going to have to actually highlight the text and either go up and down here or pick a size. We can also change the font as well. So once we have our organizational chart the way that we want it, it's time to save it. Now we can save it multiple ways. Of course, we can save it as a Word document to come back and change it, which if you need to do that, click on your organizational chart. If you notice, your arrow's there. You can make your changes, and then you can X out of it. We can save it as a PDF file, save as, wherever we want to save it, and we save it as a PDF. Now to save it as a picture to insert into PowerPoint or someplace else, we're going to right click on it, save it as a picture, and then wherever it wants to save, if we do our drop down, we can do a JPEG file interchange format and tell it to save. And then once that is done, 
We can hop over to PowerPoint, click on a picture, double click on the one we want, and you have your organizational chart inserted into PowerPoint. And there you have it. Now you know how to create an organizational chart without Visio. Just hop on into Word, use Smart Art, create it, and send it out or insert it in your PowerPoints however you need to. Just go impress everybody. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, drop me a comment, and click on that subscribe button before you go. And I'll see you next time. Until then, thanks so much for watching.